Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course analysis of variance and design of experiments. So from this lecture we are going to begin a new topic that is incomplete block designs. So now comes various questions. What is incomplete block design? What are we going to do? Where it is going to be applied? How are we going to use it? And so on. So now up to now we have nearly finished half of the course and by that time you have got a training, a sort of training that how we have proceeded in this course. What we did? That first we discussed the analysis of variance part and then we discussed that what are the sort of designs where those analysis of variance tools can be applied. And then it was not difficult for you. So now I am confident that by this time you should be confident that uh, this uh, structure can be divided into two parts and then we try to learn one by one both the parts and then we try to combine it together. But now because now you have understood that um, this analysis of variance and design of experiments, they are the two inseparable part of the so called design of experiment. You are trying to collect the data, you are trying to learn how are you going to collect the data, you are trying to learn under what type of conditions you can uh, collect what type of data. Based on that you are trying to take a call that what type of analysis or variance going to be used and then you apply it, collect the data and complete the entire project. So now why not to follow the same approach in the case of incomplete block design. Why not to first uh, develop and understand the analysis of part and once we have understood that how the analysis in the setup of an incomplete block design can be conducted, then we can just see that how the data can be collected where the tools of analysis of variance under incomplete block design can be used. So, we now take a call that we are going to follow this approach. So now in the first couple of lectures I will try to explain you all the basics, fundamental intricacies which are related to the analysis of uh, incomplete block design and then we will try to see that how we can develop different types of analysis or variance in the case of incomplete block design. And once you understand them, then after that it left only that how are you going to collect the data. And once you get that data, you apply over those tools. So this is how we are going to now proceed further. So from this uh, chapter, we are going to understand the analysis in incomplete block design. Analysis means finally our uh, objective is that how we would like to conduct the analysis of variance in the setup of incomplete block design. And you had seen that whenever you are trying to develop a tool, you need various types of constraints, conditions. So now you should be confident that whenever we are trying to put a condition or constraint, then these are the requirements of the application of the statistical tools. Right. For example, you took a constraint like summation alpha equal to 0, summation beta j is equal to 0 in the case of two-way analysis of variance, but now you understand because you included the general mean effect, so you needed those conditions. So now onwards in the first couple of lectures, we are going to develop the analysis of variance tool and in order to do that, we have two approaches. First approach is the same approach that we have uh, followed up to now that we try to take uh, 
double summation, triple summation, double summation is square, double triple summation is square or sum of squares, sum of values, etc. And in statistics, the statistical analysis can be carried very easily in case if you can convert these quantities into a vectors and matrices. But one of the main problem which I have seen in my experience is that uh, the problem comes when students are trying to switch from this classical approach of summation to a matrix approach. And one possible solution to overcome this problem is that in case if I can show you the analysis of variance or some part of analysis of variance in the case of incomplete block design using the summation approach, then you will understand those things more easily because you are used to of that approach. But def definitely you will have some complications and those complications possibly will motivate you that in case if somehow you can convert this the same expression into the setup of a vectors and matrices, you will see the life becomes very simple. The analysis of variance or the same analysis what you have conducted earlier, that becomes very simple. And once you are convinced that uh, whether the approach based on summation or the approach based on vectors and matrices is going to be simpler then nobody can stop you in this world from understanding the matrix approach. That is my promise to you. That much confidence I have. My job is only to convince you that which of the approach uh, is better. And then my arguments are not going to be based on some qualitative characteristics. They are goes, going to be based on some mathematical things. So, my very important objective in this uh, chapter is that I will try to play with both the classical approach and the matrix approach, but first I will try to uh, begin with the classical approach. And then whatever I am doing here that I will try to translate into the vectors and matrices with your help. And I will try to show you the interconnection and once that is done, you will see that the algebra which I, have, I can finish in say half an hour that is finished in 5 minutes. And then once you understand that how this conversion has happened, what is the linkage between the older and the newer analysis, then it is very easy for you to understand that uh, how to convert the other part. And then whatever you are doing, you will have a complete control, complete grip over that, that this is the reason why I am trying to do it. And once you know the reason, then who can stop you in understanding the incomplete block design. And this is one of the point where I have felt that student face this problem. So that is why I will try to, to use this approach. It might be possible that some of you think that, okay, uh, why I am trying to repeat the same thing again and again means why I am trying to do the same thing two times. But that question can be answered after you have learned the matrix theory approach. At this moment, if I try to give you directly the matrix theory approach, possibly it may be difficult for you to understand. But my job is to make the life easy and simple. So first I will try to spend some time on the summation approach and then I will try to translate it to matrix approach. And once you say, that okay, what was the need of doing the thing? That means I am successful. You have understood the matrix approach. Now, whenever we are trying to develop the analysis of variance of an incomplete block design, let me say this is a more general setup of analysis of variance that we have considered earlier in the case of one way, two way in CRD and RBD. So, this structure is going to be very general setup and this will give you a tremendous flexibility. 
whether you want a treatment to appear in a block or not, whether you want any treatment to appear more than once in a block or completely at not, whether you want to repeat any experiment for uh, one time, two time or not at all, everything will be in your control. And once I finish that part, then I will try to show you that how you can obtain the cutup of RBD or say when you can go for other designs also very easily just in 5 minutes and then you will see that the analysis of variance of the RBD can be obtained using the matrix approach not more than in 5 minutes. The only thing is this you have to understand that terminology, symbols and notations. So, these symbols, notations, etc., they are going to be extremely simple, but since you are doing it possibly for the first time, so it may take some time for you to get them settled inside your mind. Once they get settled, then after that they will become just like an alphabet for you and you can create any word, any sentence without even thinking. So, now we begin our discussion of incomplete block design. So, first I would like to give you an idea that why do we need the setup of incomplete block design, why are we going to use it and then starting from this lecture I will try to take the different symbol notations and I will try to explain you with example and then I will try to take up the issues which are going to create a hindrance in the statistical analysis because of which we will need some basic assumptions, some constraints and as you have seen these constraints are not coming from a sky, they will be the need and requirement of the statistical tool. How? When you added the general mean term in the linear model in the case of one way analysis of variance, then you realize that the parameters are going to be stable only when they are in the form of a linear contrast and that is why you have changed the null hypothesis from H naught beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta p equal to beta 2 say something like beta 1 minus beta bar is equal to beta 2 minus beta bar and so on. So, the same thing I am going to do here. So, now let us first try to understand why should we understand this incomplete block design. Now, if you try to see whenever you have to conduct uh, a complete block design. Say for example, you have conducted randomized block design. So, in the complete block design, what are you going to do? Means every treatment is going to be given to the experimental units. So, for example, if you want to conduct an experiment of testing the efficacy of a treatment effect which has suppose 20 levels and suppose you want to create the blocks. Well, the blocks are created in a way as you did in the case of RBD, so that the experimental units within the blocks they are homogeneous. So, now in case if you try to create uh, blocks of say size, uh, some size, then if you are going for the complete analysis, then you have 20 treatments. So, every block should have 20 experimental units, right. Now, as long as you are talking of this issue in terms of theory, it looks very simple, but now try to translate it to a experimental condition. First factor comes here cost, that if uh, one experimental unit costs suppose 100 rupees, then in case if you want say here 100 units, the total cost is going to be 100 into 100 that is 10,000 rupees and well that is a very simple cost I have taken in, in, in usual analysis this cost is going to be much higher. Well cost you can always say well I can have more grants, I can have more fundings, I can control it. Well or a while I can accept your claim. Now suppose you are going for a clinical trial where you are going to test the efficacy of some medicine. So, you know that when we are going to conduct such medical trials, clinical trials, then in the 
initial phase they are conducted on some animals. Those animals are uh, given that medicines and for all practical purposes the animals are killed after the experiment. So, now if you try to see for the welfare of the human being, you have to choose certain number of animals. Now, my question is that, can you choose a smaller number of animals and your aim is that you are going to conduct the experiment over them and you want to obtain a good statistical inference, but can you obtain the good statistical inference with a smaller number of animals? Definitely, when you are trying to use a smaller number of animals, then less number of animals are going to be killed at the end of the experiment. And that is what happened that whenever any clinical trial has to be conducted, there is always a sort of ethics commission which has to go through with that proposal and they have to check whether the minimum number of animals are being used or not. Similarly, if you try to take uh, one more example, suppose you want to test the life or performance of some medical equipment and that is an expensive equipment. So, now you are trying to conduct the experiment and that experiment has to be conducted till the medical equipment becomes useless, that becomes out of order means after that this cannot be used. So, in simple sense you are going to destroy the medical equipment at the end. So, do not you think that in order to reduce the cost of the experiment without compromising on the statistical inferences or the quality or the efficiency of the statistical inference, you can use the smaller number of equipments? Well, I am not saying that uh, uh, this number can be 0 because you want to conduct the experiment. So, we need some experimental material, but my idea is this can we reduce the quantity of the experimental material without uh, compromising on the statistical efficiency of the statistical inference. So, now the question is how to get it done. I hope you all will agree with me that if we can do the same experiment with the a smaller sample size and we should have more control on the designs. For example, the randomized block design says that you have to uh, repeat every treatment and every block once and once. So, similarly, you can have a different type of requirement that you uh, believe that okay, there is one treatment which is more important and that is more differential. So, you would like to repeat that experiment or that treatment combination more than others. So, in those cases RBD cannot be used. So, now the question here is how to achieve this. Then the concept of incomplete block designs comes to our help and it gives us a sort of framework where we can conduct uh, such experiments with more flexibility. Means, how many treatments are going to a block, how many times a treatment is going to be repeated, what should be the size of the block, etcetera. They will be extremely flexible. Well, you also have to keep in mind that you need to collect the data. So, some relationship of friendship between the design and analysis of variance will also be needed, but at least we will have a framework where we can do such things. And the bigger advantage is that if you understand how to conduct the analysis of variance in such a general setup, then you will know how to conduct any type of analysis of variance and any type of designs of experiment under any type of order, any type of model. 
So, now do not you think that understanding the incomplete block design and its analysis is not going to be useful? Certainly, yes, it is going to be very useful. And believe me, in the beginning, you may find some hiccups that number of the symbols notation that may increase. But I assure you, in case if you try to spend some time, try to concentrate it, and I will try my best also that I will try to go as slow as possible, then this problem will not come. And after an hour, after two hours, you will be as comfortable in the incomplete block design as comfortable you are in CRD or RBD or even LSD. So, with this promise to you all that I will try my best to explain you and with your promise that you will try your best to understand it, let us begin our lecture. Okay, so, in this lecture, we are going to talk about the basic fundamentals about the this incomplete block design. So, now, as we have discussed that if the number of uh, treatments, they are going to be large that we want to compare, then definitely we need a large number of blocks to accommodate all the treatments. And obviously, when you are trying to do it, this requires more experimental material and so the cost of experimentation will also become higher and uh, this cost may be in terms of money, labor, time, etc. Right. And the setup of completely randomized design or randomized block design may not be suitable in such situation because they will also require a large number of experimental material to accommodate all the treatments. So, as we have discussed about this thing. So, and in uh, such cases when the sufficient number of homogeneous experimental units are not available to accommodate all the treatments in a block, then the incomplete block designs can be used and they are going to help us. So, in the setup of incomplete block design, each block receives only some of the selected treatments and not all the treatments. And you can see this is just opposite to the concept of complete block design that you have learned earlier that in every block all the treatments are going to be given. right? And in case if you try to think uh, this aspect from the application point of view, then it is possible sometime that the available blocks can accommodate only a limited number of treatments due to several reasons. Right. Let me try to take a very simple example to explain you. Say for example, the suppose you want to judge whether a car is good or not. So, how are you going to say that whether the car is good? There will be different features of the car like as fuel efficiency, engine performance, body structure, headlights, interior, etc. Right. You will try to judge uh, the goodness of a car based on these factors. And uh, if you try to see each of this factor also depends on many other factors. For example, if you try to say the engine of the car is good, that means the engine also depends uh, on many parts and the performance of every part combined together will result in the final performance of the engine. Right? There is a wall, there are different types of component. For example, even if a screw inside the engine is not working properly, there is a problem that the car may break down. So, the quality of the engine will, will also be determined by many factors starting from the quality of a screw and these factors can be treated as treatment effects. And if all these factors are to be compared, then we need a large number of cars to design a complete experiment and then you can see the cost of a car is quite heavy quite large. So, the total cost of experimentation may be very high and this may be an expensive affair. Now, for this type of situation, what you can do? The first option is one can simply say no, this is becoming too high and we cannot do anything. No, that is not possible. That is not possible. We are not going to say no, but we will try our best to do as much as we can. So, under this type of situation, the incomplete block designs come to our help and they overcome such problems. And it is possible to use much less number of cars with the cutoff of incomplete block design 
and all the treatments need not to be assigned to all the cars. We can collectively choose the treatments and we can give it to some selected cars, right? So, what will happen? That some treatments will be implemented in some cars and remaining treatments uh, will be implemented in other cars. And finally, you want to do all those things but without compromising much on the efficiency, right? Now, if you try to see when you are trying to use more number of uh, observations, so that is the rule of thumb that uh, more number of observations are definitely going to give you better statistical conclusions. Yeah, we believe that all the observations are good, they are correct. But definitely, we have to strike a balance between the efficiency and the cost. So, in case if we have a situation where the efficiency is not going to be reduced much, then don't you think that uh, this will be a better option? So, the efficiency of such incomplete block design in general are not less than the efficiency of a complete block design. I am saying here in general, means you will see that there will be some conditions, right? So, similarly, if I try to take here uh, another example, suppose we consider a situation of uh, constructive experiments. For example, we are trying to test the life of a television sets, LCD panels, etc. So, if there are a large number of treatment to be compared, then we need a large number of television sets or LCD panels. And the implementation of incomplete block designs can use a smaller number of television sets or say LCD panel to conduct the test of significance of the treatment effects without losing in general the efficiency of the design of the experiment. And you can observe that this will also result in the reduction of the experimental cost. The total cost of the experimentation is also going to be less in comparison to the complete block design, right? And similarly, as I explained you in the beginning, in case if we are going to consider any experiment where the animals are involved, like as clinical trials or the biological experiments, then one would always like to sacrifice a smaller number of animals, right? And then beside those things, the government also issued certain guidelines which restrict the experiment to use a large number of animals and you will see that in such ethical commissions or ethical committees, there is always a statistician who is going to comment that uh, what should be the optimal sample size or what should be the smallest sample size in which one can draw the same statistical inference without much compromising on the efficiency, right. So, in such cases, Either the number of treatments to be compared can be reduced depending upon the number of animals in each block or to reduce the block size, right? And in uh, such cases when the number of treatments to be compared is larger than the number of animals in each block, then the block size is reduced and the setup of incomplete block designs can be used. For example, if you say suppose you have got here 20 treatments and suppose uh, you want to conduct the complete block analysis, then you will need 20 animals in each of the block. Now, suppose uh, you do not have a sufficient number of animals. So, what you will do? Means, you will have no option except to reduce the block size because the medicine or the vaccine or anything that chemical compound you can get more, but you cannot get uh, more animals. So, the block size has to be reduced. So, what will happen? That the number of treatments will become larger than the block size. So, in that case, obviously, you have no choice that you can implement all the treatments in all the blocks. So, and in such cases, the setup of incomplete block design can be used without any problem. And surely, this is going to result in a lower cost of experiment, right? So, the incomplete block design need a smaller number of observation in a block than the observation in a complete block design to conduct that test of hypothesis without losing the efficiency of the design of experiment in general. So, do not you think that this is a very convincing argument, right? And if you try to recall, what was the difference between the complete and incomplete block design? The designs in which every block receives all the treatments, they are called as complete block designs. And now, we can also say that the design in which every block does not receive all the treatments, but receive only some of the treatment, they are called as incomplete block design. So, obviously, the block size is smaller than the total number of treatments in the case of incomplete block design in comparison to the complete block design, 
right so obviously the total number of units in the block in the setup of an incomplete block design will be smaller than the total number of units inside the block in the case of complete block design now we have now understood the reason that why we would like to have uh, this incomplete block design setup now when we are trying to consider the incomplete block design our basic objective is that we want to develop the tools for analysis of variance right now as you have done earlier in the case of one way analysis of variance two way analysis of variance and so on you had only one type of analysis of variance that you actually did means i will not to give that a name but uh, that was a particular type of analysis which has got a name but i will try to specify the name after we have understood the possible different types of analysis of variance right so in case if you are trying to consider the the general setup of an incomplete uh, block design then there are three types of analysis of variance one is called intra block analysis and another is inter block analysis and third here is the combination of the both the intra block analysis and inter block analysis together i will try to use some features of both the analysis and we will have a sort of intra block and inter block analysis of variance together which is called as recovery of inter block information so this recovery of inter block information is also a sort of analysis of variance right so now first we try to understand what are we really going to do as i said in the beginning that in the case of incomplete block design you will have some terminology which will be introduced for the first time and that is going to be different than what we have used earlier one way two way or say other types of design one thing i would like to explain you here before we go further that in this definition i am simply going to explain you what are these things and you know that there is a difference between the learning process when you try to learn only the theory or a statement and when you try to do it so at this moment i am simply trying to tell you the basic structure basic definition what happens but it might be possible that you may not understand that what i am trying to say so that will be clear to you as soon as we start doing this analysis and anyway we are going to do this analysis so up to that point i will request you that you try to have some patience and try to take this concepts only as a face value and have confidence on me that i will try to explain you each and everything as soon as we move further so in the case of intra block analysis the treatment effects are estimated after eliminating the block effects and then the analysis and the test of significance of treatment effects are conducted further now this concept uh, may not look very familiar to you that uh, when i'm trying to say that the treatment effects are estimated first after eliminating the block effects so you can recall here i can just give you here a brief idea you can recall here that in the case of a two way analysis of variance you had two factors say block effect and the treatment effect and you were not bothered that uh, when you were trying to partially differentiate the sum of squares due to error and you were trying to obtain the different normal equations then you were not bothered that how to solve those equations you have three parameters mu and say the p values of uh, say this alpha i's and say q values of beta j or the symbol what you use this capital i values of factor a or say capital j values of factor b so you were not bothered that how to solve them first you have to solve alpha or first you have to solve beta but when you are trying to make this setup more general then still we are going to follow the same approach that we used in the case of two way analysis of variance we are going to obtain the normal equations and then we are going to solve it so you will see that some problem will be there and because of which uh, we will have to take uh, 
the decision that if we, we have two types of equation like this x plus y is equal to 4 and x minus y is equal to 3 and you have suppose equation number here 1 and 2 here and suppose if you want to find out the value of x and y then you have here first option here that from 1 you try to obtain the value of x as 4 minus y and then use in 2 and then I will say here I will try to use uh, here x as 4 minus y minus y is equal to 3 and then I try to solve here the value of y and then once I get here the value of here y and then I will substitute it in x value from equation number 1. The second option is this instead of using here 1 you try to use here equation number 2 and try to find out here y as say here say x minus 3 and then use it in 1. So, what you will get here this will become here x plus x minus 3 is equal to 4 and then from here you try to find out the value of here x and then try to find out the value from the equation number 1 for y. So, the same thing here happens that here either you are trying to do the approach number this first or second you are going to get the same values of x and y, but this will not happen when you are trying to do it in the case of incomplete block design. So, that is what we are trying to say that uh, in the intra block analysis we will have both the options that first we try to eliminate the block effect that then we try to estimate the treatment effect uh, or vice versa, but at that moment we will try to see that uh, why we are saying that the, the, the treatment effects are estimated after eliminating the block effects right, but this is what I mean right. Now, in case in any analysis whenever you are trying to conduct a two way analysis what is your objective are you interested in the treatment effects or are you interested in the block effects you are more interested in the treatment effects and that is why we want to estimate the treatment effects after eliminating the block effects. And in case the blocking factor is not marked then the intra block analysis is sufficient enough to provide us the reliable correct and valid statistical inferences. So, if you feel that the block effect is not very important among all the blocks then definitely this analysis of variance is going to give you a good outcome. So, for that we will try to conduct the intra block analysis. Now, suppose it uh, does not happen and suppose the blocking factor mean the effect of the blocks are important then in that case the block totals may carry some important information about the treatment effects. So, now in this case you cannot ignore them, you cannot remove them from the study because they are also carrying some information about the treatment effect. So, in such situation what we try to do that we would not like to remove them, but, but we, we would like to use them and we would like to use them so that the information about the treatment effects can be recovered can be retrieved from the information and we can have a different type of analysis of variance. So, in such situation one would like to utilize the information on the block effect instead of removing as in the case of intra block analysis and if we would like to estimate the treatment effects to conduct the analysis of design and this is called here as say inter block analysis of variance and this is achieved through the inter block analysis of an incomplete block design by considering the block effect to be the random and then you if you recall at many times I have told you that unless and until we are trying to specify here whether the effects are going to be fixed or random we are going to assume that they are fixed, but this will be the situation where when we are trying to consider the inter block analysis of variance then you will see that we will assume the block effect to be random because of certain reasons right. So, this is about the inter block analysis of variance. Now, definitely uh, in both the cases in the case of intra block analysis of variance and in inter block analysis of variance we are trying to estimate the treatment effects in two different ways and both of uh, them have certain advantages. So, that is why a natural question comes that when you are trying to estimate the same parameter that is the treatment effect by two different approaches and both of them are good in their own 
her respective places then don't you think a natural question comes that can we use them together both of them are trying to retrieve the information about the treatment effects on the basis of given sample of the same data so this idea is implemented in the analysis of variance where we try to use the intra block and inter block estimates of the treatment effects in a particular way and then we try to conduct the analysis of variance and this is called as recovery of inter block information so in this case what are we going to do when both the intra block and inter block analysis have been conducted the two estimates of treatment effects are available from each of the analysis then a uh, natural question arises that is it possible to combine these two estimate and obtain an improved estimator of the treatment effect and use it further for constructing the test statistic and since such an estimator comprises of more information to estimate the treatment effects so it is naturally expected to provide better statistical inferences well that may create some complications also so that we will try to see when we are trying to handle it so this objective is achieved by combining the intra block and inter block analysis together through the recovery of inter block information so these are the three possible ways in which we try to conduct the analysis of variance when we are considering the incomplete block designs and believe me they are not difficult right and as i said we will start with the usual approach uh, of involving the summations and different subscript to y's for example you wrote y i j you wrote y i j k etc then you wrote summation over y i j double summation over y i j and so on so that the same approach classical approach that you try to write down the sum of the square due to errors try to differentiate it uh, with respect to the parameters and then try to solve them right and then you will see that uh, when we are trying to consider it then uh, at some point of time you will start feeling that if i can convert the same quantities into uh, vectors and matrices then the algebra will become much simpler and the solution can be obtained in a much neat and clean format so at that approach gradually he will switch to a matrix based approach and then you will have an advantage that by that time you have understood the summation approach then you will try to do the same thing in the matrix approach so you will be able to compare both the approaches and i'm sure that you will get convinced finally that matrix approach is giving you much simpler forms of the results which are easy to understand and finally you will you yourself we will say okay let us now go for the matrix approach rather than the classical approach right so this is my approach that uh, that i would like to establish one to one relationship between the two approaches so that you can understand better and i personally believe that spending one hour two hours more is not a bad idea if you can understand it better now so now i have given you here a fair idea and i tried my best to convince you with reason that why we are going for the incomplete block design now in the next couple of slide i would simply try to give you the symbols that we are going to use here and then i will try to take an example also to make you better understand but at this moment i would say you simply try to ignore all the symbols and notations whatever you have learned up to now up to this lecture we are going to de uh, define new symbols right some of them are they are going to be the common between the earlier one and this one but uh, definitely you have to understand that we have a limitation of the symbols also we have alphabets greek alphabets english alphabets now you understand they are the latin alphabets so that is why and then secondly if i try to take too many non notations then it will also become difficult for you to understand so that is why i will request you that now you try to just uh, remove all the symbols and notation from your mind and try to understand them a completely fresh so now we are going to understand the setup of the incomplete block design under which we would like to conduct the analysis of variance right and 
time to time uh, when, whenever there is a confusion in the symbols I will try to explain you. So suppose there are V treatments that we want to compare and definitely we are going to have here a two way classification. So we, we would like to create some here blocks. So we assume that B blocks are available. So small v is the number of treatments to be compared and small b is the number of blocks that are available to us. And definitely if you try to recall you have done because in the case of randomized block design that you had a small b number of blocks and every block had the size v. So now but we are not going to RBD but we are simply trying to assume it in a simpler way. Now means every block will have the plots. For example, if you have this type of see here blocks, well I am now trying to take here a very general structure. Suppose this block has 4 plots and this block has here 6 plots 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and suppose this block has only 3 plots 1, 2 and 3. So now, so what I am saying to say here that this ki, k small k and then in the subscript i, this is going to indicate the number of plots in the ith block. Right. So, for example, here I can say this is my here block B1, this is block B2, this is block B3. So, here K1 is going to be here 4, K2 is going to be here 6 and K3 here is going to be 3 as simple as that. And similarly here RJ, RJ is the number of plot uh, receiving the GA treatment because in the case of incomplete block design you are not going to give, give all the treatment to all the blocks. So, this RJ is the number of plot, uh, plots uh, which are getting the J treatment. So, J will go from 1 to V and I is going from 1 to B. Now, if you try to see what will be the sum of here K1 plus K2 plus KB, you are trying to add here the number of plots in the first block, second block up to kth block. Do not you think that this is going to give you the total number of plots? You can see here this k1 plus k2 plus k3 that is going to give you the total number of plots available in the entire design. So that is simply going to be here same as here n where n is the total number of plots. Now similarly if you try to look at here say could this say r1, r2, rv. So r1 is the number of plots which are receiving the first treatment and r2 is the number of plots which are receiving the second treatment and rv is the number of plots which are receiving the VA treatment. So now if you try to see you are trying to give all these treatments only to these plots, you are not uh, giving it outside the experiment. So do not you think that if I try to sum this R1, R2, RV together, then they are also give you the same value here n that is the total number of plots. Means if I can see here that uh, for example there are here. 4 plus 6 plus 3, there are here 13 plots. Now I try to give here, say here treatment number 1, say 4 time, treatment number 2, 2 time, treatment number 3, say here 7 time. So now what will happen if you try to sum them together? So that will again come out to be 13. So this is what I am writing here, n is equal to R1 plus R2 plus Rv and this is the same as K1 plus K2 plus Kb. And then we are assuming here that each treatment may occur more than once in each block or may not occur at all. That is the beauty of this incomplete block design that you have a complete flexibility that how many treatments can be repeated for say how many times. So that is our setup. Now after this we introduce here a one more symbol which is here nij. This nij is going to indicate the number of times the j treatment occurs in ith block. Try to understand it. It is simply counting the number of times a particular treatment is occurring in a particular block. So nij is going to indicate the number of times a treatment say j treatment that is occurring in the ith block. So now in case if you try to take here for example if I try to say here an is equal to 1 or 0, what does this mean? And suppose this n i g is equal to 1 or 0 for all 
ing this means what when I, when you are trying to say here energy equal to 1 that means every treatment is occurring in every block once because this is true for all ij so you are trying to say here number of times the j treatment occurs in the ith block and this number here is 1 so that means every treatment uh, is occurring once inside the block right and when i am trying to say that nij is equal to 0 and this is true for all ij this means no treatment is occurring at all in that block right so nij equal to 1 or 0 for all ij means that no treatment occurs more than once in a block and treatment may not occur in some blocks at all right so similarly uh, uh, you can write here more clearly that nij equal to 1 means that the j treatment occurs in the ith block and nij equal to 0 means that the j treatment does not occurs in the ith block and now if you try to find out the value of this quantity summation over j goes from 1 to v and ij you are trying to say here suppose if i take here i equal to 1 then this becomes here n11 plus n12 up to here and 1v now you are trying to say that this is going to give you the number of times a treatment is occurring in a block so these are going to be some numbers here 1 2 0 and so on so if you try to sum them here what is going to be this is going to be exactly as the total number of plot inside the block because you are trying to give the treatment inside a particular block where i equal to here 1. So, this is going to give you the value of here k i that is the total number of plots in the ith block. So, this is going to give you here the value of k 1 and similarly you can find other values also. So, you will have here then k1 and similarly you can find out here k2 and similarly you will have here kb okay so now we try to consider here this second thing if you try to see here here i am writing summation over i and ij so suppose if i take here j equal to here 1 so now this is going to be here n11 plus here n21 plus up to here n b1 so now if you try to say what are you trying to do here? You are trying to take here the first treatment and then you are trying to say how many times the treatment number 1 occurs in the block number 1, then how many times the treatment number 1 is occurring in the block number 2 up to here number of times the treatment number 1 is occurring in block number here B. So, now if you try to sum them together, you are trying to say the number of times a treatment occurs in the block this is called replication or repetition. So, do not you think that uh, this is going to give you that how many times the treatment number 1 is going to occur in the block number 1 this is here R 1 total number of times the treatment 1 occurs in block number 1 so, this is your here R 1. So, in general for j equal to 1 to v the summation over i and i j will give you here the value of r j and definitely if you try to sum all these n i j's. So, that is simply going to give you the total number of observations in the experiment right. Okay, so, now we come to an end to this lecture and you can see here in this lecture I have given you background that why should we use this incomplete block design and then after that I have introduced you with the symbols and notations. And it is very important for you to remember these uh, symbols and notations and in the beginning you can just uh, write them on a different uh, sheet of paper so that you can keep it with you that whenever I am going through with the analysis part if you have a confusion you can always look into those symbols right and in the next turn I will now take a smaller sample for the model how the model will look like how 
are we going to move further and how these different types of things are going to happen. So now you try to revise it, practice it and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.